This is an overview of a new technology that's being created at the Web Payments and Credentials Community Group called Link Data Signatures. So if we think back to how we trust people in the world, if we think all the way back to a couple of thousand years BC, uh, we can find some examples of people sending trustworthy messages uh, from one side of the world to the other. Right? Uh, typically in those days, uh, you'd scribble your message out on a clay tablet or a piece of uh, papyrus, and you would stamp it with an official seal, either a wax seal or an imprint of some kind. And then your messenger would carry it over a very long distance and deliver it to its recipient. Now that recipient usually knew what the official seal looked like, what the official type of wax was used, and, and things of that nature. And that way of sending uh, trustworthy messages halfway around the world uh, was actually a, a pretty good one. It, it worked to a, to a fairly good degree. Uh, it's true that it could be forged from time to time, but in general, most of those messages weren't, that, uh, weren't forged that often. Now, if we think forward a couple of thousand years, we kind of have the same problem today. Right? We have information that sits in different cities and organizations around the world, and we need to send it around the world. Right? Uh, typically, we beam it off of satellites, and it takes milliseconds to get from one side of the world to the other. But the idea here is the same. You have a message, and when you transmit it, you want to make sure that it has a digital signature so that the receiver knows that it's an official correspondence from the sender. So the, the idea here is that in order to establish digital trust, we need digital signatures. So the technology that we're going to discuss today is called Link Data Signatures. And before we get into how a Link Data Signature is actually created, let's just take a look at what the end product looks like. Now this is a JSON-LD message. Uh, link data uh, is basically a way of expressing data uh, in a way that's easy for developers to use and easy for machines to understand. And the basic message that we're going to send today is, is just hello. You want to send a hello message from one side of the world to the other. What we have up here at the top is a standard JSON-LD context. It has uh, an explanation of what these terms over here mean, as well as some of the terms on the right-hand side here. We have the message itself, which is what we're sending. It's a message we want the other person to be able to receive. Uh, and then we have the signature. So this chunk right here is a linked data signature. And it consists of fair, four fairly simple uh, pieces of data. We have the type of the signature, which is how the signature was created and how the verifying side should uh, verify the signature. We have the creator of the digital signature, which in this case is a particular private key or public key uh, associated with a private key. We have the date that the signature was created. And then we have the signature value itself down here at the bottom. So this is it. Right? This, is, this is what a linked data signature looks like. It doesn't get any more complicated than this, really. And if it seems like it's simple uh, to you, that's good. These are the types of signatures we want to use uh, on the web. So now that we've seen the end product, let's take a look at how this stuff works, how it's created. So the first step in signing any piece of digital information is that you have to normalize it into a byte stream of some kind. If we think about linked data, linked data expresses a graph of information. People, places, things, events, and how they're linked to one another, what the relationships are. And we need to be able to take that graph and normalize it into a byte stream. You know, we need to be able to say this node comes first, this node comes second, this node comes third. And we need to make sure that whatever algorithm we're using will work on one side of the world with a machine on one side of the world just as easily as it'll work in the same way uh, with a machine on the other side of the world. So it needs to be deterministic. This data set normalization algorithm needs to be deterministic. And once we have our list of information that we want digitally signed, we can send it to the digital signature process. So the first step in this process is to take our graph of information and translate it into a normalized data set. So that is basically this happening. We've done the graph, we've gotten it into a normalized data set. Now the next step of the whole signature process, the linked data signature process, is to actually sign the information. 
And to do that, we need two key components. The first one is a private key, what's called a private key. It's a piece of information that is only known to the signer um, and is very, very difficult to recreate. The other thing that we need is an algorithm to use with the private key to generate the digital signature. Right? So with linked data signatures, nothing much changes in this idea that we have a private key. There are many other tutorials that will go through how you use private keys and what public-private key cryptography is. So I, I hope that you go and read about that if you don't know about this. But the rest of this tutorial assumes that you know some basics about public-private key cryptography. So, we will use the key in conjunction with some kind of algorithm. Now, like I said, the linked data signature process allows you to plug a variety of different algorithms into this process. So, you can use RSA, RSA or uh, elliptic curve cryptography to generate all these types of you know, digital signatures. So, the idea here is that you take an algorithm and you pair it with a key, you send this data through the process, and what you end up with at the end here is a digital signature. It's just a single piece of data that some organization or person or machine can use to verify that the piece of data actually came from who's, who they think it came from. So let's take a look at what the verification process looks like once the signature has been created. So the idea here is that this document has been created at some point, sent over the internet or the web, received by the receiver and now the receiver wants to verify the information. Now the inputs to the verification algorithm, the verification process, uh, are of course the public key that's associated with the private key and who the owner of that public key is along with the message that it received. Now once it has those three pieces of information, the verification algorithm can do some mathematical crunching and come out with a verified or not verified result. Right. In this case, it comes out with the same graph of information that, that was sent there, and it says that it's verified because the byte stream was verified. Now, the more astute observers will notice that we never really said how the machine figures out where the public key or the owner comes from. Right? We just assume that it has access to it. So this is where some of the linked data stuff comes in here. Right. Let's take a look at what the end product looks like again. Right. We've got the JSON-LD information here. And the key is in these two pieces of information. Right. The, the key to understanding all of this is in these two pieces of information. This is the algorithm that should be used. This is pluggable. You could use a variety of different algorithms uh, for linked data signatures. It doesn't have to be this particular one. But the real magic is in this bit right here. Like I said, this entire message has everything that a machine needing to verify this message needs. Right? And the key is here, quite literally. The creator of this message is a private key, and this is the public key component. And the way that we've identified that public key is that we've given it a URL. And so if you use a web browser or some kind of user agent, you can actually go out to this location and fetch the public key information. So the machine starts at the digital signature, follows the link out to the public key. The public key is marked up in linked data. The public key specifies who its owner is. You can follow that link to see who the owner is and get more linked data on the owner. And then the owner can have another uh, relationship back to the key, saying that they own the key. This bidirectional relationship is very important. It allows, uh, to, it allows us to ensure that the ecosystem is secure. But the idea here is that these are just regular links on the web. right? These, each one of these dotted lines is the boundary between one website and, and another. So your public key could live on one website, your identity information could live on another website, and yet more public keys could live on another website. Right? The use of links, the linked data part of all of this, is fundamental. So what we're really trying to build here is a system where you specify the links to your keys and other really important credential information that you have. Right? We're trying to turn the web into a pu huge public key infrastructure a big trust mechanism.
right? So you have a person here that is linked to not only their public key, but let's say their university degree and diploma, which has been digitally signed by the university, or a law enforcement credential, digitally signed by a government, or a medical credential, digitally signed by a university that grants uh, training in, in the medical profession. Right? And all these pieces of information are linked data. All of them are digitally signed so that we can trust that when somebody provides information to us, we know that it is valid. Once you have that in place, you can start doing some really interesting stuff with linked data signatures. For example, you can do things like create smart contracts where different nodes on the linked data web Right, can enter into a contract because they have the ability to do a linked data signature. And in that contract, you can link to people and organizations, organizations' assets, organizations' bank accounts, uh, people's individual bank accounts, and financial accounts, what their skills are. And all this information can be linked into a contract. Right? This is a very powerful concept. All of a sudden, it means that we can start trusting the information that we have on the web in a much more robust way. And not only that, we can start executing digital contracts with one another uh, purely over the web using technology that largely exists today. So as you can imagine, this has a variety of very interesting repercussions for things like web payments and credentials and licensing online. Right? There are a num number of groups that are working on this technology right now. One of them is called the Web Payments Community Group. Uh, another group is called the Open Credentials Community Group. And of course the JSON LD Community Group is also looking into a lot of the, uh, a lot of the information that we uh, talked about in this tutorial. Right. So if you're interested in joining in and learning about or helping direct some of this work, please join us in the Web Payments Community Group, the Open Credentials Community Group, or the JSON-LD Community Group. If you just Google for each, any one of those uh, terms, you can find them uh, fairly easily. This entire presentation is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Like License, which basically means that you can share this with anyone that you'd like um, without asking for permission. So please share this with your fellow developers uh, and tell them about this amazing new technology that we hope is going to make the web far more trustworthy than it is today. This video was made possible by contributions from Educational Testing Service, Accredit Trust, and Digital Bazaar. The video is copyright 2015 by Educational Testing Service and is provided under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Like 4.0 license. This means that you are free to share and modify the content in this video as long as Educational Testing Service is attributed and the same license is used for any derivative works.